So today's fantastic romp through the world of mathematics deals with graphing inequalities. You guys are excited. Uh, hey, there you go. There's that small. You had to just have to turn that frown upside down. Graphing inequalities really is not that bad. The first thing you're going to do is that you graph, oops, excuse me. You graph as though whatever you have were an equation or function. Graph whatever we have as though it were an equation or a function. What that means for you is that if you can identify the slope and the y-intercept, then graph using that. If you can identify just the intercepts because it's in standard form, go that way as well. We may be graphing things that are parabolas and absolute values. You know how to graph those. You identify everything that you know about it. The vertex, how it's been shifted up, down, left, and right, stretched, compressed, flipped. You know all this stuff. Don't look at her like you, like you don't know what I'm talking about. Come on, like a boss, right? Oh, right. <laughs> sometimes I keep wondering who is the boss. <coughs> Wouldn't it be cool if they made a show called that? Now, you have to look at your inequality symbol. If you see less than or greater than, just like this, what that means for us is that we're going to have a dashed line. With the inequalities that we've already done, you've seen that whenever we are graphing on the number line, we would, have used, we would use an open circle. Well, the same thing would happen here. If you have less than or greater than, you're going to be plotting open circles. And then whenever you connect the dots, you're going to be using a, graphing a dashed line or a dashed curve in the case of parabolas. However, if it's less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, it's going to be a solid line, just like you would have had a filled in circle. Is everybody with me on that? Okay. Then the third thing here is that you need to solve for y. And remember that y is the same thing as having f of x. So if I give you something that's f of x, <coughs> and you're trying to graph that guy's an inequality, understand that f of x is going to be the same thing as y. So what I'm saying here matches up with that. So when you solve for y, and that's probably what most of you will do when we deal with linear inequalities, because you like to find that slope in the y-intercept, if you see that y is less than, or y is less than or equal to, that means that we will shade We'll shade down or shade below. You're going to shade below whatever that graph is that you have. If, on the other hand, you have y is greater or y is greater than or equal to, you're going to shade up or shade above. So, three things that you're going to check out here. One is graph it like normal. Graph it as though it's not an inequality, but just a regular equation or a function. You're going to figure out if it's a solid or dashed line. You're actually going to write that. That way, just like we did with parabolas, you write out everything you know. So when we have these inequalities, you're going to list everything you know, whether it's the slope, the vertex, compression, whatever. Then you're going to say whether it's a dashed or solid, solid line, and then down here, you're going to look at the way the inequality is set up compared, compared to the y. If it's less, then you're going to shade down, shade below. And if it's greater, then you're going to shade above. 